We all want someone to love. I am whatever he wants me to be. But you've never seen love like this before. I love giving orgasms. I love getting them. Provocative. They happen to be first cousins. I'm a full-time baby girl. Eye-opening. Washing is just pure fun. <laughs> There's never a bad force. Outrageous. Ugh. It's hot. I like it. We really enjoy clown sex. Proving there's always someone for everyone. I share my home with 12 dolls. Or something. Once you drink the Kool-Aid, you never go back. Who wouldn't like to live their king 24-7? <laughs> this is Extreme Love. On tonight's episode of Extreme Love. Oh, behave. Oh, thank you, Mr. The granny who knows how to whip her men into shape. But can she find true love among her collection of loyal bums? When they're looking at me, telling me I'm beautiful, I just love it. And it's all you can eat every night for these two gals. Watching her eat turns me on. Because extreme love means big love. Mm. See what happens when one of them wants a second helping. We've always had the fantasy of just having two lovers. And later, Wiccans, witches, and magic that's dripping with hot sex. We manifest our deepest desires through orgasm. But will this fiery ritual leave one of them feeling burned? This guy does enjoy the company of other women. They have to be comfortable with me as well. But first, in sunny Los Angeles, Andrea and Chloe are hungry. So it's chicken nuggets. Yeah. That's easy. But full of love. And after five years together, they're recently engaged. I found her <laughs> on Instagram. Oh, you're really beautiful and I wanted you know, to get to know you. We talked for about seven hours mm -hmm. that night on the phone. We didn't even sleep. I was so, like, I want to see you quick. And we've been together since. Now they plan to make their union official. We're going to get married in Vegas, We're on the moon. I don't care. We're going to get married. 100%. And these two have a special sort of romance that's supersized. Watching her eat, that's what turns me on. Getting her belly bigger, that's the end result, but you have to enjoy the trip to the belly getting fat. And I sure do love to eat. That's a huge rib. Yes, ma'am. I'm a huge girl. I'm the feeding. She's the feeder. You wouldn't believe how many people are into it. When she's encouraging me to eat, I can see her getting all turned on, and it's like the more I do it, the more touchy she gets, feeling around and stuff, and I love it. Now that plate, I want clean. And then you go back there a couple more times, and then dessert. Mm -hmm. That's what I want to see. Oh, don't get a lady boner. Because <laughs> it's huge. Mm -hmm. Love it, honey. I'm glad I found, like, how we were, like, open and honest with our things that kind of turn us on a little yeah. bit. And you were like, why are you hiding your stomach all the time? Your stomach's beautifully round. And I, I thought you were joking. I was like, shut the heck up. You should be proud of it. I am. I like when you show it off. Literally, I can feel it. Like, my stomach is, like, Building bubbling. Up. It's bloating up. You got to stay big and lovable for me. Yes, mommy. Anything for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when they first met, Andrea weighed about 200 pounds. But Chloe has big ambitions. Chloe is going to bring me some dessert because I am super hungry. She has a perfect goal for me, like a certain weight, like 350, 400. And right now I'm like 230, 240-ish, somewhere mm -hmm. around there. <laughs> Are you getting turned on? Mm -hmm. You're so bad, bad girl. She's in love with this big old belly and she loves to rub it and she loves to kiss it. And if it got a little bit bigger, of course, the love for it would become more bigger too. Chloe has always been sexually attracted to BBWs, big, beautiful women. So now, in order for their love to grow, so must Andrea's waistline. I love that cake. You made that? Yep. I think it is superficial for me to only be attracted to large women, but that is my preference. And if she's not into it, then there's no reason for the relationship to work. When Andrea first met Chloe, she wasn't looking for a feeder. She was looking for a man and thought she'd hit the jackpot because back then, Chloe was Jose. I was in love with Jose. He looked like a biker dude. 
beard and scary bandana wearing, sports loving type guy. But Jose was hiding a secret. I felt like I was living the life that people expected me to live. But in my mind, I wanted to be somebody else. And a life-changing event forced Jose to a self-realization. Woke up, my face was starting to droop, went to the hospital. They said, it sounds like you're having a stroke. The doctor pulled me aside and said, there was a possible chance that Jose may not make it through the night. I was like, I'm too young to die from this and die not being truthful to myself and to her. So I decided to tell her and I was like, okay, I gotta tell you something. I want to be a trans woman, I want it to look like one. I was like, girl, we can we get out of here, you survive, do whatever the hell you want. You want to look like a banana, we'll make you look like a banana. She came home and we started doing makeup right away. After recovering from this near-death experience, Chloe was born. It's amazing, the transformation over the years. We've created Chloe together. I only see Chloe, that other person is just, he's fading away, he's not even here anymore. But with Jose transitioning to Chloe, it left a gaping hole for Andrea in the relationship. I've never been attracted to women. When I met her, I signed up to have a boyfriend. And now Andrea wants to fill this void by bringing a boyfriend into their lives. Even like as a teenager, I've always had the fantasy of just having two lovers, two men, and I'd be the woman. But she has to get Chloe to agree to it. Are you okay doing the whole polyamorous thing, even after we're married? Chloe doesn't look too excited at the prospect of this, but that's what Andrea wants before she commits to marriage. Another woman with big demands lives in England. 68-year-old Sherry is a retired granny who's found a pleasurable and sometimes painful way to keep herself busy. I'm Mr. Sophia. Welcome to my playroom. When I see a, a, a guy on his knees in front of me, I just love it. Is my back, mistress? What about your back? Did I tell you to mumble? That's right, this senior citizen is a top-notch dominatrix, and her new career has changed her life. Being a dominatrix has taught me that there are no boundaries to what I can do with my life, that I'm in full control and that I'm loved. Mistress Sophia uses bondage, discipline, sadism and masochism, BDSM, not only for her clients, but as a way to mend her broken heart. I was 59, my husband left me, and it was frightening because I was suddenly thinking, how am I gonna manage? We're gonna lose the house. I really curled up like a dormouse on the sofa, and there I stayed for nearly three months. Things got so bad that Sherry's daughter Amy feared for her mother's well-being. She'd stopped eating. She'd dwindled down to probably about six stone. I thought she was gonna die. Sherry reached rock bottom when she had a breakthrough moment and found herself on the path to recovery. I was watching the television one night and I came across a documentary about phone sex girls. And then suddenly, everything changed. I applied to a company and I started being a phone sex operator. And I was very good at it. Excited by her success, Sherry put down the phone and learned how to crack the whip. I'd watched online tutorials for about six months because I wanted to get it right and I wanted to make sure that I wasn't going to do any damage. Sherry found immediate financial success and a new purpose for living, but Amy still kept an eye on her. The first few weeks that she was having booking, I would be here or my partner would be here. And then we realised that actually well, there wasn't really anything to be worried about. And half the time we are here watching TV, hear the occasional spanking. Come on. Sherry converted her suburban house into a bondage playground. A lot of mistresses would call it a dungeon, but that's a bit pretentious for me because it's obviously a conservatory. I have a bit of a mask fetish. I like to put these on my subs and then we have a bit of fun. Mistress Sophia has built up a loyal set of eager submissives, which she calls slaves and sissies, to help keep her satisfied. I love caning. 
That is my passion. CBT is a close second. Ball torture. I like to hear the squeals and the begging of a slave. The strap, the paddle, I don't mind which. Just enjoy it. Sherry gets a lot of pleasure giving men pain, but does this mean she's angry at them? I do get asked if being a dom, whether or not I'm getting revenge on men, but actually I like men and I don't feel I need revenge. But dating when you're a dom isn't easy. I like the person to know that I'm a dominatrix before the date. Whether guys see that as some sort of challenge, I don't know but I've had six marriage proposals and I've not even met them. I tend to go out with my subs for dinner and we are still in role play. I order for him, he drinks what I order and he pays the bill. But Sherry doesn't just lay down the law at restaurants. Her hands-off rules in the dungeon are even stricter. There is no touching. They're allowed to worship my feet, but not above my ankles. And obviously absolutely no sex. Simple as that. Sometimes I get asked for an overnight, and for some reason they seem to think that an overnight means they crawl into bed with me. Well, they couldn't be more wrong. It's in here. They're put into bondage, and they're put in my cage, and then off I go to bed. Today, Mistress Sophia is welcoming back one of her regular subs. Good morning, Mistress. Good morning. And as Mistress Sophia is so good at what she does, she loves to share her passion for punishment. How are you? I'm good. How are you? So today, she's teaching an eager new dom. I'm respected and looked up to. And I, and I know that because I get so many emails and messages from doms who aspire to be like me. We have Mistress Ruby with us today. Oh, I look forward to that, Mistress. I'm sure you will. For these submissive males, Mistress Sophia provides an experience they can't get from a regular relationship. Shall we put a little callous teeth on? Sherry has found success as a mentor and a mistress, but has her heart grown hard? Or deep inside, is it still as soft as her subby? Oh. In Pennsylvania, nature lovers Sky and Vlad have chosen to make their love nest in the leafy landscape of Milford. We met 26 years ago at the Limelight nightclub in New York City. Uh, I was working there doing tarot card readings. One uh, blissful night, Sky came waltzing over to my table. We connected physically, emotionally, spiritually, and mentally. You know, each other's minds first, and, and then the physical comes later on, and then you end up, you know, connecting, you know, in that way too. There is a big age difference, but it didn't bother me at all. It appealed to me, actually. We dated for 10 years and he finally proposed to me. Despite their 15-year age gap, it was magic that proved to be their unbreakable bond. I am a pagan witch. The spirits are here. Can you feel them? It's like little dancing fire fairies in the woods. Skye was introduced to the spirit world by her mother at an early age. Most people would look at me and think, She's out of her mind. Husband Vlad doesn't think Sky is crazy at all. Because I am involved in the pagan Wiccan community. So would it be, blessed be, blessed be, blessed be. Pagan Wiccan lifestyle is the uh, worship of the land, caring for the land, uh, seeking energy, also spreading that uh, positive energy, not just people, but to uh, animals and everything around you. I wish for everything positive. 11, 11. We have a beautiful fur family. We do not want any kids. These are the only kids we enjoy. While their fur family make them happy, it's their Wiccan pagan traditions that make them ecstatic. Surrounded by candles, their lovemaking rituals elevate them to a state of bliss. Vlad is an amazing lover. Everything that we do, it's very ritualistic. He spices up our sex life by pouring candle wax on my body. He introduced me to sex magic. It's just the most amazing thing that you can ever engage in. Sex magic has been talked about in the pagan Wiccan uh, way of life. 
involves two, sometimes more people share a mutual vision during the height of orgasm uh, where everyone uh, together and uh, you visualize what you want all at the same time. Sex magic is focusing your energies, aligning yourself, um, knowing when to stop and when to And sex magic has made it possible for Vlad to satisfy Sky several times a day. Doing it five times, six times in a day, that's part of the, you know, tantra. Stopping just before and then going back and resuming again a couple hours later and then doing the same thing and resuming again a couple hours later and then doing the same thing and then usually by the fifth, sixth try, that's when you can really... Vlad and Skye use sex magic to increase their sexual pleasure, but they also use it to reach a higher spiritual level. Once you hit that orgasm, that is where you manifest what you desire. You can desire anything in the world. Your crown chakra evolves. It shoots out of your head and you can feel your spirit just coming out. It blows my mind. What you want to do is you want to try to all orgasm together. You can channel that sexual energy between each other. We manifest our deepest desires through orgasm, and that's what it's all about. 26 years going strong, and our sex life is amazing. In order to keep up with their marathon lovemaking, Sky has devised a unique routine for keeping herself flexible. We kind of find the uh, standard missionary position kind of boring. <laughs> um, the, all different types of uh, angles and tantric sex. Vlad loves this position. He also likes this one. Hey, Vlad, what do you think? It's great. We attribute a lot of our uh, great sex life to our Wiccan pagan lifestyle. And uh, all I can say is that uh, we've uh, a lot. For pagan Wiccans practicing sex magic, the most important celebration on the calendar is about to happen. The full equinox, when day and night are of equal length, signaling the start of autumn. I'm making sage cones. Sage is important because it's very cleansing, it's purification. The fall equinox is something that uh, two or more people can celebrate in a group. Something like that can morph into sex magic if all parties agree. Sky does enjoy the company of other women. If it's someone that Sky is comfortable with, then they have to be comfortable with me as well. We've had situations where it's been four of us uh, in the past as well. So it basically brings me a lot of pleasure and a lot of happiness to see Sky having a great time and being happy. They're hoping that Sky's Wiccan girlfriend, Cybelle, will join them at the Equinox tonight. She's already taken part in fire shows with them before. The fire performance during the equinox is an offering to the gods, goddesses, to the ancestors, symbolizing purification and purging and providing a lighted path on which to walk on. A Cybella is very beautiful. She'll help the ritual be enhanced. We've known each other for so long, and I think it would be joyous so we can have a good time during the ritual. It, it could end up in a uh, trine or a threesome, so to speak. Uh, under the moonlight, by the fire. Vlad and Sky get ready to meet their Wiccan friend in hopes of raising spirits and experiencing heightened sex. Blessed be. The clock is ticking. Will Cybelle show up for the equinox or will they miss this year's opportunity for a magical threesome? There's no shortage of piggy behavior tonight. Oh, that's so hot. Back in Los Angeles, Chloe and Andrea are planning a party of their own, a wedding party. But there's a hitch. I've never been attracted to women. That's right, Andrea wants a man. Even like as a teenager, I've always had the fantasy of just having two lovers. Uh, originally, I wanted like two boys, two men. So when Andrea's boyfriend, Jose, became her girlfriend, Chloe, that fantasy was put on hold. 
Andrea had no problem accepting Chloe into her life, as she had also undergone her own transition years before. I honestly knew I was a gay boy from five years old. I did not feel like I was trans until a puberty. Andrea was once a boy named Joseph, and at age 13, began to transition into who she is today. It felt comfortable for me, and it matched my voice. So it's not just like a sexual thing. Some people would say, oh, you're trans because you want to sleep with straight men. No, honey, I can get no problem. I don't have to put on a wig and makeup to get it. That's how she got Jose's attention before things changed. Don't get me wrong, I love Chloe with all my heart, but when I met her, I signed up to have a boyfriend, so it was really hard. And Chloe is fully aware how much Andrea has sacrificed to be with her. She was giving in to my transition, and I felt like I should give in to her wanting to be polyamorous. But Chloe has doubts about Andrea's intentions. She's just trying to find someone to take over as soon as she's tired of me. So that was the one thing I was, I was mostly worried about when she brought up the polyamorous thing. Can Andrea convince Chloe she will always come first? And is Chloe really on board with the plan? I just want to know, honestly, are you OK doing the whole polyamorous thing, even after we're married? <sighs> I just don't want you to feel like any less of my partner. You are my number one, 100%. It's just something that's in my brain where I feel like I, I have to have two partners. I love you so much that I want to share you with somebody else so they can see what a wonderful person you are. <laughs> I have you. That's all I care about. Anything else is just a bonus. If anything, I feel more connected to you because we're going to be married. True. You know, it's going to be like a feel. We're going to have a marriage license. We're going to have either writing. It's going to be in the books. <laughs> right? Yeah. Back in sleepy southern England, 68-year-old dominatrix Mistress Sophia has a date like no other. Oh. Today, she's joined by another dominatrix, Mistress Ruby, who needs help whipping her skills into shape. I connected with Mistress Sophia when I had moved to the area. There are many mistresses to learn from, and they all are equally good, but I wanted to dive right into the deep end and basically just wanted to find out the most sadistic mistress that there was in the area. But first, the basics. Do you require a safe word? Yes, please, mistress. Mm. Very well, Jamaica. Thank you, mistress. Just bear in mind, if you use your safe word, our session is at an end. Is that clear? It is, mistress. Shall we put a little callous teeth on? Now, the question is, will the session go straight to hell or to Jamaica? Oh. Have you done sounding before? No. These are sounding rods. Let's go for this one, then. For the uninitiated, a sounding rod is a stainless steel tube that's inserted into the urethra for fun. Let's have a nice bit of lubrication. So, how about a little sounding slave? Thank you, mistress. That would be lovely. Are we ready? Yes, mistress. Oh. Oh. Don't make a fuss. What are you feeling? Absolute pleasure. And for Mistress Sophia, the feelings are mutual. I enjoy giving punishment. I enjoy giving pain. It's not sexual. It, it, it's excitement. I get excited when they're looking at me or adoringly and telling me I'm beautiful. I just love it. You're not going to go up here at all because we've got a coccyx here and we've got kidneys. We want to keep away from that. Caning. That, I think, is probably my passion. I love the thwack of the cane. Doesn't matter if it's not hard, you need to get the technique before you get the severity, OK? And it's not just the pain from her cane that can run deep, it's her feelings for her slaves, too. I care deeply for my 
slaves, mm. my subs. But there's one thing I am quite passionate about. I enjoy hurting them physically, but I wouldn't hurt them emotionally. It didn't take me very long to realise that submissive men are gentle, lovely people. They're misunderstood. Some people call them perverts and deviants, but that's not the case at all. Sherry's passion for BDSM has given her life a sense of purpose. Before my divorce, oh, I was a pathetic little dormouse. Now, I'm an empowered woman who knows exactly what I want. But being a dominatrix does add another dimension to dating. When I date, I'm very upfront. If somebody asks me, then I'll just tell them. And if they don't ask, I like to slip it in because I don't want to shock them. If they know right from the beginning, then um, there are no problems. I'm not interested in dating submissive men um, and I'm not interested in dating dominant men. If I date, um, I'd like it to be a vanilla man. But while she waits for Mr Vanilla, she has her hands full with her subs. Right, I want you to give him ten. Ten, thank you, mistress. That's good. I'd like to be doing this for another ten years. Um, I'll probably stop when I'm 80. I'm hoping I can still wield a cane. And even if Mr Wright never comes along, at least she's on the giving and receiving end of some very extreme love. I like being Mistress Sophia. This is the happiest I've ever been. I'm worshipped and adored. And that, for somebody who's 68, is pretty good. Mutual adoration is also in bloom for Andrea and Chloe, who are planning their wedding. We're going to get married. The baby's Where's on the moon. I don't care. We're going to get married. 100%. But these ladies need to earn the cash to pay for it. We um, have this little phone sex job or phone actress. Hey, it's Lauren. What's going on? We play characters to help people get on. I'm 19 years old. I'm five foot one. Very much into the taboo. Uh, no limits with me. So. I play four different characters. I play myself, obviously. And she plays two guy roles because her voice is a little deeper. Oh yeah, you like that gym rat looking kind of guy? I just got home from a run, so I'm like dripping sweat. So. That's what we do. We just have phone sex all day. Right now, I'm wearing little booty shorts and a sports bra. Still got my hair up in the bun. Oh, slow down. I don't want you to finish so soon. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Each call earns them a dollar for every minute on the phone. <laughs> you have to be very open-minded to do what we do, and you have to be kind, you have to be patient, and I feel like I'm helping the perverts out there, so... Mm -hmm. <laughs> now that Chloe has agreed to her terms of adding a boyfriend to their bed, Andrea wants to give her a dream wedding. But she's keeping her plans a secret for now. So I've done my research and I've planned a theme wedding and I haven't told her where we're getting married, but she kind of knows a little hints here and there, but it's the theme that's going to suit both of our styles and lifestyles because we're not traditional whatsoever and we don't want a traditional wedding. Alongside the wedding planning, Andrea is eager to find Mr. Wright. I love a guy with a beard. But not that one. Why? I don't, I don't like the way he's looking at me. Perhaps Chloe is having second thoughts. Oh my god. OK, you can't say no to this one. I like that gangster look. That's all you ever pick. You're going to pick that guy, you're going to pick that guy. And you're going to pick that guy. I'm going to pick that guy. See, yeah, you're exactly cause, right. Because you like them fatties. No, I just like a guy that knows how to eat. Ooh. When I looked into your eyes, it took my breath away so bad that I almost needed to call a paramedic. I am a warm soul seeking soothing, charming bell that could be the peanut butter to my jelly. Cheesy. You every line in the book there, buddy. He's cute, though. He's, he's okay. I like a little cheese with my nachos. BBW Andrea has a new way to make money from feederism. Hey, everybody, it's your favorite <laughs> burping girl, Andrea. Burping girl is a character that I created on YouTube. Today, we're at the grocery store, and we're going to be burping on your groceries. <laughs> That's disgusting. 
you. I get a lot of men saying, wish you can burp in my face, kill two birds with one stone, satisfy my baby and her big fat stomach fetish, and then satisfy my burping fan. In Pennsylvania, pagan Wiccans, Vlad and Skye are getting ready for tonight's fall equinox celebration. It's the highlight of their sexual calendar, where pagan Wiccans come together to thank the gods for the harvest and practice sex magic. Cleansing the house, casting out all bad spirits. Hopefully for them, that means the love will be free-flowing at tonight's equinox. And for that to happen, they need their friend Cybelle to show up in the woods, but they're not sure if she can attend. What I hope to gain from this whole equinox ritual is higher consciousness, a deeper connection to the forest, the elements, and move forward. We are bringing in the fall, dancing around the bonfire, wearing our ritual robe, using our ritual daggers to call down the five elements. Night falls and Vlad and Sky are in full equinox attire. Tonight's uh, equinox is going to be a uh, really great event, a great time. Blessed be. I'm looking forward to getting in that car and getting over into the woods where we belong. With high expectations of a sex magic session under cover of darkness deep in the woods, they say goodbye to the summer with the first fire of fall and leave it to the spirit world to bring Cybele to them. We are offering this sacred wine to the gods they pray to the gods and goddesses for a third pagan Wiccan to join them. It's time to reconnect. And then, as if by magic, yes, it's Cybele coming to join them in their revelry. Very neat, sister. Mary Beast. Thank you for your call, for the review, and the, and the gods have made it possible for me to be here. Oh, Lord, be. Vlad Let's thanks be. the heavens above for Cybele. Fire, air, earth, water, spirit. We offer our bodies, we offer our souls, we offer the roots of the earth. It's time for Vlad and Sky to fan the flames with a fire dance. We spice things up using fire sometimes. We'll run the fire torches uh, gently on uh, each other's bodies. Careful, Vlad. You're liable to set off your hot rod. Now the time has come for Vlad to honour the new moon. Our prayers were answered tonight. Yep, looks like they achieved their equinox climax thanks to the spirit world and a little sex magic. Big, beautiful feeder couple, Andrea and Chloe. A hundred pounds. Are after more than just a big belly for Andrea. Okay. They want a big fat wedding too. But before they tie the knot, there's something Andrea must do. I want to call my dad and I want to let him know I'm gonna get married to Chloe, not Jose. And that's it. Hello, Chloe. Andrea's father had bonded with Jose, but struggles to accept her transition to Chloe. I think it confuses him because like my dad and, and Jose had a relationship, like a father and son, because mm -hmm. he would talk about like sports with Jose and some of the things that he couldn't do with me. He I'll be like this in front of him and he'll still call me Jose. Andrea wants him to know that she'll be marrying Chloe and would love his blessing before she walks down the aisle. Hi, Dan. How, how's everything? I'm good, how are you? Good, I'm not 
we were wanting to get your blessing so that me and Chloe can get married if it's okay with you. Can you hear me? We were wanting to get your blessings. Oh, uh, the call dropped. I don't know why it's not. I think the call, it's either dropping or he's doing it on purpose. Como? I love you, Dan. Sí, muchas gracias. Okay. Okay. I love you. Bye. <laughs> that went well. Now in Las Vegas, BBW's Andrea and Chloe are preparing for their special day. Think about it tomorrow around this time. We marry women. <laughs> I don't know. Still got time to pull out of this. Is that the plan? Oh, yeah, right here. Marriage. Oh. Right. First things first for this loving couple, they must make their union official. With the legalities taken care of, now they must pick up a surprising guest. My ex-wife is going to be flying out here. Ellen is our number one supporter. When we told her that we were planning on getting married, she was up for it. She's excited. How are you? Oh, good. How are you guys? How was the plane? That was good. Well, if somebody told me that the ex-wife was coming to the wedding, I would probably think it was pretty odd. But we have the kind of relationship that works for us. When Andrea came into the picture, we joked that we're sister wives because she's the new wife, will be today. I just want them to be happy and enjoy their nuptials. In addition to Chloe's ex-wife, her son Canyon has come to watch them tie the knot. People may look at my family and think it's odd or dysfunctional, but how can you function in a normal family? Growing up normal is so dreadfully boring. With everyone here, it's full steam ahead with the wedding. It honestly doesn't even feel like we're going to get married. I know, it feels like a normal, regular It day. feels like we're getting ready to go to the bar, honey. Right. <laughs> Andrea has kept the wedding venue a surprise for her bride-to-be, who loves to embrace the dark side. I'm doing it all for you, baby. You and your, your spooky gothiness, which I adore. Here comes the princess, honey. Beautiful. You like it? I like it. Girl, I wasn't sure if I wanted to wear this dress, but this is my lucky That's dress. That's lucky dress. You gotta spray the for good luck. You're shaking a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> I did not know true luck until I met you. And I'm not just saying that because we're on our way to a wedding. Me neither. I've told you that over and over again. It's been five years since they first met. That's where we're getting married. Now it's time to get married and see the surprise Andrea has been planning. Here we are, honey. Wedding chapel. Wow. The Gothic nice. wedding chapel. This is the real deal, honey. And it certainly is the real deal. The real Gothic deal. Thank you, baby. Good evening, foolish mortals. I'm Queen Reaper, keeper of the night. And we have gathered here today when we're gonna join Andrea and Chloe. Do you promise to love, honor, and cherish each other in good times and in bad? Yes. yes. Good answer. Andrea. Do you take Chloe to be your beloved wife? I do. Yeah. And Chloe, repeat after me. I promise I'll always be faithful. I promise I'll always be faithful. Today and forever. Today and forever. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Do you have rings you're going to exchange one another today? We do. Then by the power vested in me, I do pronounce that from this day forward you are now Legally married. <laughs> you may kiss one another. Ladies and gentlemen of the underworld, this is Las Vegas' newest married couple, Andrea and Chloe. Congratulations. Thank you. It 
It's the morning after the wedding, and Chloe is enjoying feeding Andrea a breakfast sandwich. Mmm. Pretty good. I need another bite. I don't. I don't know if I. <laughs> you didn't get any of the sausage. You I know. Get all of it all at once. Girl, what did you think about that Grand Reaper? No, it was awesome. That was the best surprise you could have given me. That was so cool. I knew you were gonna love it. I woke up happier today than I went to bed. I wasn't expecting to feel different, mm -hmm. but I do. I feel more in love, more happy, more comfortable. But these newlyweds can't get too comfortable because there's work to be done. Now that we married, girl, we really have to buckle down and start looking for a boyfriend. Looks like Chloe was hoping Andrea would forget about the boyfriend idea once they were hitched. I need a man with a good job who loved to watch fat bitches eat. And you know, I give him a little suki suki once in a while. Mm -hmm. It's all in fair trade. But one thing's for sure, for Andrea and Chloe, wherever the road takes them, they'll get there together. Now, we have to go put on our sexy clothes. We have to look like a walking Snapchat filter. Okay. Let's go.